Here is my problem 16 from chapter 8 homework. We're looking at building a confidence interval. We happen to know some facts. We know that we took a sample of 26 individuals. We got a mean of the x x's, x bar is 46, and the standard deviation of the sample is 14. We don't know the population standard deviation. We'd like to build a 99% confidence level. Uh, interval. So uh, let's let's uh, build the setting for this. So there was an original population of this variable x. We're assuming that that distribution is uh, essentially normally distributed and we take a sample of n is equal to, let me just go back and check, uh, n was 26. We're then thinking about the distribution of sample means. By the central limit theorem, we know that the distribution of sample means, because the original population was normally distributed, this will be normally distributed. And the mean of the distribution of these sample means is going to be equal to the mean of the original population. And the standard deviation of the distribution of sample means will be equal to the standard deviation of the original population divided by the square root of n. Now that standard deviation is quite important to us in building a confidence interval. Remember that that's going to be the idea all the time in confidence intervals is to know the, the standard deviation of the distribution of sample means so that we can build that confidence interval. Our problem is that we don't know what the population standard deviation is. So we'll use the best information that we have. That is, we'll use the sample standard deviation to approximate the population standard deviation. That means this distribution over here is also an approximation. And so we're going to approximate the standard deviation of the distribution of sample means as the standard deviation of the sample divided by the square root of n. Because of that approximation, and all these, because of that approximation, we're going to need to use a t distribution instead of a z distribution. A t distribution looks much like a normal distribution; it's just flattened out a little bit more. And remember that there's a different t distribution for every degree of freedom. So we're going to have to worry about the degree of freedom here. We know that our degree of freedom is going to be n minus 1. So the degree of freedom in our case is going to be 25. OK, now let's go back and look at the confidence level that we're going to produce this at. So our original problem said we wanted to do it at a 99% confidence level. That means we want 0.99% of the population centered about the mean on this t distribution. That means that we're going to have an alpha level of uh, 1% or 0 0.01. That's the amount that's going to be out in these two tails. So alpha is, is the part that is not in the confidence area. And so alpha is going to be 1 minus the confidence level. Now, the amount that's going to be in either one of these tails is going to be half of alpha. Now, because I'm going to write a script, I'm going to call that a tail. And that's the area that's in this lower tail. It's also exactly the same as what's in that upper tail. For my discussion here, I'm going to just color in this part right here and observe that that area is what we are calling the tail. Now what we want to do is find, find this ZC. Sometimes the book calls that a Z uh, alpha divided by 2. Uh, we want to find that particular value. Of course, we know some probabilities. We want to find a quantile, so we will use a q function. We're using a distribution t here, so we'll use a qt function to find that. R has a qt function, so it's going to be able to find this value for me. What I need to do is tell R what the area is below this zc that I'm trying to find. I know that the area here is 99%. 
Okay, so I'd need to take that 99% plus a tail, or else I'd need to take one, the total area underneath here, minus this upper tail. That's the way that I'm going to choose to do that calculation. So this area that I've outlined in red is one, the total area under the curve, minus the amount that's in this upper tail. So one minus the tail is that area. Now I've made a mistake here because QT also needs to, to know the degree of freedom. So unlike the QNorm function, where there's only one standard normal distribution, since there are uh, a different uh, T distribution for every degree of freedom, I need to include the degree of freedom here in the when I ask R to calculate the QT so it will know which one of the T distributions to look at. So I need to put a 25 right there. The degree of freedom is N minus 1. Now I've actually made another mistake here. These should be called the TC instead of a Z, ZC because we're using a T distribution instead of a Z distribution. So that critical T value is, uh, is calculated by this QT. Okay, now these Z's or T's, these critical T and Z values, are going to tell us the number of standard deviations we need to be away so that we're getting a, a, the particular confidence level. Uh, so now we want to, to use that to move that up and, uh, and build our confidence interval um, up in this distribution. So when we took our particular sample, then we got a, an X bar here, which was our sample statistic. What we're going to do is build a confidence interval about that that takes the number of standard deviations away from, from this value uh, times the standard deviations that are here. So what we're going to do now is build a, uh, a margin of error. So the margin of error, the amount that we need to add and subtract from X bar to build this confidence interval is going to be that TC, or when we were doing it uh, with the ZC, uh, that, that critical value times the standard deviation, the best standard deviation that we've got for this distribution up here. So it's TC times uh, SC. And then we're, we're ready then to build our confidence interval. So if we did this experiment over and over again and took every possible sample of size 26 from this population, found the sample mean for each one of those, and built this confidence interval for each of those different X bars, then 99% of the time that confidence interval would in fact capture uh, the, the mean of the population. The mean of the population would be between those two. Okay. Let's build a script that will do those things uh, for us in, in our particular problem. I'll use our fiddle to build my script. So we're looking at this data. Remember, we transferred much of that information over to our, our picture. So I'm going to look at the picture and pull the information from there. The X bar, we're going to need that eventually as well, so I'll ask, put that in my script. X bar was 46, that was given in the problem. Uh, the standard deviation of the population was also given in the problem. Let's see, I might need to go over and look at that. That was 14. So let me get that in here. Standard deviation of the population was 14. 
Some other information that was given in the problem was that our confidence level was going to be uh, 99%, 0.99. The alpha was going to be uh, 1 minus the confidence level because alpha is everything that's not in the confidence level. Uh, we called half of alpha a tail. So we'll uh, ask R to calculate that for us. Alpha divided by 2 is, is the amount that's in the tail. We're going to use that upper tail in our calculation when we, when we do that. So when we need to find that... that uh, TC value, we're going to use a QT of 1 minus the tail. Let's just put that in there. Uh, QT, let's, let's call it a TC, is going to be a QT of 1 minus a tail because 1 is the total area underneath the curve and the tail is the area in that upper, upper tail as well as in the lower tail. But <clears throat> We're going to just subtract the one in the upper tail. Uh, and then the degree of freedom, R has already calculated that for us, so we can just put that in there. That's going to be what our TC is. Now we're going to be able to build our uh, <clears throat> margin of error, which is going to be... Oh, wait a minute. I need to know the standard deviation of the distribution of sample means. Remember that that was given right there, okay? It's going to be S divided by the square root of N. So that's going to be S divided by the square root of N. And so now I can build my margin of error. And my margin of error is going to be the TC times uh, the standard deviation of the distribution of sample means. So now I'm, I'm ready to build that confidence interval. I'm going to uh, just build that as a vector here. I'm going to build the lower uh, value and the upper value. So it's going to just be, uh, the lower va value is going to be x bar minus that margin of error. And the upper value is going to be x bar plus the margin of error. Okay, so there we've told R to do all of those pieces that we got from drawing the picture. Now look, I've been doing this for decades, you guys, and I still draw that picture to try and track down where everything's going. And then I can write the script, and the script will, uh, will do the calculations for me. And so there we are. There's the lower bound, and there's the upper bound. So let's put those values in the problem. So there's my lower bound. I'll copy that and paste it up here. And let me recover this. And oops, <laughs> not there. I need the calculation. Uh, and there's the upper bound right there. And let's see, they wanted it to answers accurate to one decimal place so this one re rounds to 0.3 and this one rounds to 0.7 and then I'm hoping that I get a green bar from this uh, whoops I must uh, <laughs> okay so I got it correct but in the particular incarnation that I'm using it's not recording it in the gradebook that should record in your gradebook okay. Okay, I hope that helps. Let me just show you what that script was one more time. Uh, where was it? Okay, there were two things that helped me do this. One, I drew the picture and followed through the picture the pieces that I needed to have and the pieces that I was given, and then I could walk through and build a script that would do the calculations for me in R. Okay, good luck.